I'm getting a little bit worried that the Mario team has been going a bit too stir-crazy with their nostalgia baiting lately. Sometimes these moments are absolutely earned, with the New Donk City celebration going down as one of the most defining moments of my gaming experience. Other times you have the Mario movie, which was a shameless conveyor belt of cheap member berries moments with atrocious licensed music parts that didn't even have any kind of coherent structure and felt like it was the most soulless- sorry, I got a little bit off track there. But the point is, Mario is becoming a bit too self-congratulatory lately, and I feel like the franchise is beginning to walk backwards rather than triple jump forwards. Just to put your fears to rest, I'm not talking about the fact that Nintendo is remaking a bunch of old Mario spin-offs. I'm actually thrilled that these fantastic games are being airlifted off of their desert island consoles. These games need to be preserved, so I will never criticize a remake or remaster as long as the game isn't already on modern platforms. I'm talking about the little winks and nods within these Mario games. Things like Mario 3D World having a remake of Mario Bros with a Luigi skin. Those are what's making me a little bit uncomfortable. But that brings us to today's subject, Mario vs Donkey Kong, which I suppose isn't reflective of modern Nintendo as this is a remake of a GBA game. But I want to bring it up as an example of how it correctly celebrates Mario's past without making it feel derivative. Firstly, the game that it's celebrating, the original Donkey Kong, while not being the most exciting and nostalgic title in the franchise, it's undoubtedly the most important, as is every first entry, no matter how many light years better the sequels ended up being. Don't worry Mass Effect, Gears of War and Xenoblade 1, I still think you're all the best in your franchises. You can see this with many modern franchises only celebrating their most highly regarded entries instead of the ones that gave them their start, and it feels a little bit sad to me. I mean, I get it, Assassin's Creed 1 is no AC2, but throw Altair a bone, why don't you? Mario vs Donkey Kong feels like an honourable game, for lack of a better word. One that has an intense reverence for the franchise's clunky origins, and I have a deep respect for this game for returning to something that, while not as popular, is far more critical. But this isn't just a shiny new spin on the Donkey Kong arcade game, it's a full-on evolution of its entire design. This is a true modernization of the established formula. I hesitate to call it a fusion between Donkey Kong and Super Mario Bros, because there's really not a lot of platforming in here. Now, the original arcade game wasn't a puzzle game either, it was an arcade game, and you can't really modernize an arcade game to current audiences. So much so, that the uncontested ruler of arcade games Housemark declared them dead. So you have to change it up, while also not letting the later titles influence your digital shrine to your inspiration. So they took an aspect that defined the arcade title and built a game around it, that aspect being the clunky movement. But is resurrecting those antiquated movement options a good idea for a new audience? Is it better for the old game to be fully preserved, or should you make it more acceptable for new fans? Mario vs Donkey Kong has a brilliant solution. It feels like the entire game was built around how Mario moved in the arcade game, and so they built this slower paced, more scaled down game to align with the original's traversal. What was once a frustrating feature that was the pinnacle of what Miyamoto's programming skills could achieve, became the foundation for Mario vs Donkey Kong, taking the limited movement of Mario and building levels that required thought rather than skill to solve. I love that while it evolves the Donkey Kong arcade game into a new genre, it still retains all the classic elements that the game is known for, like having the same enemies as well as the hammer power-up, which has been many a people's bane in casual Smash Bros matches. My favourite of these in-game mechanical references has to be the return of the Donkey Kong Jr. tightrope mechanics, which, while the original game played with, Mario vs Donkey Kong pushes to their absolute limit, while retaining all of the old elements of them, like pushing to the side while holding onto one, will make you jump off them regardless if there's one next to you. But if there's one part of the original game that's going to be near impossible to respect, it has to be the boss fights against Donkey Kong. How can they possibly match those battles 
with this literally smaller scale game. The boss fights are where the reverence for Mario's origin is on full display. Donkey Kong once again attacks exclusively with his original weapons, that being barrels, and instead of rhythmically jumping over each one as a cheap nostalgic remake, Mario vs Donkey Kong finds 16 different ways to remix the original concept behind the game for a modern setting, with far more complexity, but not creating any more frustration than the arcade game did with clunky jump mechanics that lead to some deaths feeling cheap. This isn't some cheap nostalgia bait for Gen X, it's a remake and modernization of this legendary game, and it's how you properly honor your legacy while not just shamelessly bringing it back by simplifying the elements that made Donkey Kong distinct and building the game around those core parts while recontextualizing it for a new audience. But all that can be said about the 2004 original. This is the 2024 remake, and it also has some fun remixes of more modern Mario mechanics, namely the teleporting boxes that debuted in Mario 3D World. What were once clunky zone transitions that unfairly stole the spot from the warp pipes, they're now fully realized as puzzle mechanics that use space and positioning as a solution. It goes to show just how much Portal changed puzzle games forever, now that so many of them use teleportation mechanics in some creative but ultimately derivative ways. Mario vs Donkey Kong is the perfect tribute for the game that made Nintendo what it is today. Without feeling like a cheap retro throwback, it instead takes what made that four decade old game so unique and builds an entirely new game around it.